And she ends up talking to a bunch of guys that you're, you're feeling jealous. And you try to, maybe for like a half hour she's talking to that guy, then half hour she's talking to another guy, and they look pretty cool and everything. You're, she's not coming to you. And you're thinking, man, I brought her this thing, and it's not happening. And you're feeling off. Now, you could pretend like it didn't matter. And that would be the stronger option. The strong man would say, wouldn't even notice. He'd think it's cute that she's trying to do something. Or he wouldn't even re be thinking about, about her. He'd be thinking about having a good time doing something else. But it's too bad. You're not that strong yet. Right? It's, it's hurting you. And so you try to be reactive. You go and hit on some other girls. You know, I'm going to hit on this girl because she's hitting on that guy. You hit on this girl. But of course it's not going to go well because you're being reactive. She's going to sense that there's something off because you're not being honest with yourself first. Right? So then she comes back. So all of this horrible stuff, it makes it worse, right? You're hitting all these girls. It's not going that well. You go, you're go, trying to look cool, going to your friends. It's not working that well. The whole time you're just it's nagging at you. It's, it's bugging you. They're, she's talking to these guys and it's bothering you. At the end of that hour, she comes back. It's like, oh, hey, where have you been? Come on, man. I've been here the whole time, right? You're thinking. <laughs> but what are you going to say? You just say whatever you've been thinking in terms of this, your psychological archaeology. Because you should sit there and think, wow, so this is what it feels like. This is what it feels like to be jealous to be insecure? And why am I feeling jealous and insecure? And you just chart that out. You might even need to pull out your iPhone and write it all down. Because it's going to go, why, why, why? You know, and let's say that she comes over and you, I'll just give you an example of, of a case, right? She comes over and says, hey, where have you been? And you can just tell her. You could pretend like, oh, hey, let's get a drink. I wasn't bothered. Go get a drink. And she could tell something's wrong. Right? You've got that thought in your head. Instead, just say, you know, I brought you to this thing and I was hoping we'd just spend some nice time together. That was pretty stupid of me to bring you to this because there's full of dudes that want to talk to you. And of course you're going to talk to other guys. You know, just telling the truth, right? Of course you're going to talk to other guys. But, you know, um, my friends are saying to me, just don't think about her. Go talk to these other, other girls, you know, forget about her. But it sucks. I don't know what you did to me. I can't stop thinking about you. I know I've only known you for one date. Like, you know, this is only a second date, so I shouldn't be feeling this way. But I just got to say, you did something to me, and I, I, it, it, it got to me a little bit, you know? You won this one. Oh, man, it sucks. I shouldn't feel this way. Because that's the truth, right? You know you shouldn't feel that way, but you do. You just have to say it. I know I should be stronger, but I'm not, right? And I, you know, even, um, even when I was uh, working today, I uh, ended up um, just, I was doing my work, but then this, I, this image of you came up in my mind. Right? It's like, no, I can't think about her. I got to be strong. I got to be independent. I got to give her space, you know? Now you're verbalizing all of the shit that you've been thinking because you paid attention to your feelings. If you are honest and sincere, and you're not trying to game or manipulate her, but you're just being honest and sincere, just sharing what, you, what you're saying, girls will get addicted to you because no one's like that. Dudes want to pretend like they don't feel shit. They're just the strong man. They don't feel anything. But if you're just honest and vulnerable and expose yourself for what you really are, like just, hey, this is out there, and I know, it, always tempered by knowledge of what emotional strength should look like. You know, I know I shouldn't be affected. I know I should be stronger. Like when you're working out, I know I should be lifting a certain weight eventually. That's my goal. You have a goal. But you're not there yet. So you just say it. And you know what will happen is she gets addicted to the vulnerability. And you end up creating drama for her. <laughs> that becomes very addictive. Like, oh, my God. You know, really? She's going to think, really? You care that much about me? And here I'm like struggling, like, no, I don't want to, but I do, but no, I don't want to, but I do. Now, you can see that this could actually become a technique if you're a really good actor. <laughs> you could use it. Um, and, uh, you know, some people have. And uh, it's also always just, just keep in mind, it's always most powerful when it's honest. And it's also best for your happiness. If you're just expressing yourself honestly, you're not hiding anything. You just put it all out there. And it takes a lot of strength, emotional strength, to do this. Right? It takes a certain level of maturity already to do that. But the stronger you get emotionally, the more powerful honesty will be for you as an expression. The more powerful, the, more strong, the stronger emotionally, emotionally you be, you become, the more powerful honesty will be for you. So the step here is to simply, as you're doing this, why am I feeling this and why? You're going to be coming up against your vulnerabilities, your insecurities, your weaknesses. You need to be comfortable and content with those. Not content in the sense that you're not going to work at them. But you're going to have to deal with them as, hey, I'm, don't be ashamed of them. Let's say you're a skinny guy at the gym or you're a fat guy at the gym. You, you're not there yet. You haven't met your goals yet. But you, if you hide it, you're not going to work at it. Right? You've got to just put it out up front. For example, let's say um, your, your plan is to lose 20 kilograms in two months. 
which is actually quite a lot. So 20 kilograms in two months. And as you get to the six week mark, you're making good progress. You're feeling good. You know, you've lost 15 kilograms and you're feeling good. And then you hit that two month mark and damn it, you got there. 20 kilograms of fat gone, right? Then you celebrate, three days later, you just gained three kilograms. <laughs> At the end of that first week, you get back at five. Now you feel like shit, shit, I backslid. I backslid. Now I'm at 15. Notice that, objectively speaking, you're at the same weight as you were in the sixth week. But in the sixth week, you felt great. But now in the ninth week, you feel like shit. Why? Because it's not about the objective measure, right? It's not about the, how good you are, objectively speaking. It's about progress and trajectory. Do you see an upward trend? Are you getting better and better every day? That's what's important. So if you're not, you, you can be comfortable and content with where you are now as long as you're getting better and better. That's what will make you happy and will give you that rock solid confidence. It doesn't matter whether you get there actually. Because if you get there, you've reached your goal and you don't progress, you're gonna plateau and then you're only gonna go down. So what matters the most is that you're making progress. How can you be comfortable and content with your flaws, Dave? You know, that's what you're gonna ask me, right? If you're making good progress, maybe you haven't fixed it all yet, maybe you're still needy a little bit, maybe you still um, get attached too easily, or maybe you're still insecure about your height or your race or your weight or whatever. That's fine. Put it out there. Say, you know, when you said that, you know, that little jab against me, I, I'm still pretty sensitive about my weight. I know I shouldn't be. I'm trying to work on it. But man, that hurt. Damn it. That's real power. When whatever you're thinking and feeling, you just put it out there. You notice um, a great example of this is uh, 8 Mile <laughs> at the end. When Eminem did that uh, rap off, right? And the guy was like, man, they got all this shit on you. What if they say all this and all this and all this? What did he do? He just put it out there. He said, hey, you know, you're going to say all this. Yes, I live in my mom's trailer. Yes, I, you know, I got jumped by you dudes. Yes, I, yes, all of this shit happened. You know, but I know something about you, you know, and then put that out there. But he was just honest. When you have brutal honesty, nobody can hurt you because you have nothing to hide. If you have nothing to hide, you're indestructible. So this is how to use honesty to make yourself stronger. That's the, the inner, well, uh, that's the inner. This is the outer of what to, how to express it, the thought processes you're going through, and how to be cool with yourself even if you're not your ideal self yet, which is probably never going to happen. Because if you're progressing in life, it never ends. Right? Your life will, hopefully you'll be progressing all the way to the end. So what matters is the progress. What matters is the journey, not the goal. And the stronger you get emotionally, the more powerful honesty will be for you. All right, I want to thank you for listening so attentively. Uh, Carpe Diem sees a day and make your life extraordinary. All right, guys, David Tian, that was awesome. Uh, questions we got? Questions, yes. All right, one second, one second. Let me just pass the mic. Ah. Well, that was unreal. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's being honest. Thank you. Um, I guess my insecurity, I know it's going to be specific, but it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's my disability. Okay. So it, would it still be the same with reframing? And Can you tell me vaguely? What uh, I've got cerebral palsy. Okay. So it's like... It, physically impacts my muscular development and, yeah, basically. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, your disability. I haven't worked with anyone with specifically that disability, but um, I've worked with people who have other physical disabilities, medical disabilities. Um, and one of my, my good friends is now, uh, used to be a fitness trainer, now he can't train because of a certain genetic um, thing. So uh, it... I can, I understand, partly understand where you're coming from. And what you, what I would say is, let's go back to the inner because that's the most important 